Aloha and mahalo for joining Restaurants Hawaii here on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director for the Hawaii Restaurant Association, and it's lunchtime in Hawaii Nei. Today, we are having a very timely conversation with two restaurateurs and Siobhan Garcia. Hey, Siobhan, could you please introduce yourself and our two guests? Sure. Um, I'm Siobhan Garcia. I'm the uh, executive assistant for the Hawaii Restaurant Association. I wanted to in introduce Ryan Tanaka. He is the president of Island Business Management. He is also the vice chair for the Hawaii Restaurant Association. And we also have Robert Bach, who is the owner of MLB Enterprises, better known as Roundtable Pizza here in Hawaii. Thank you, Siobhan. As Hawaii continues to battle with COVID, Hawaii Restaurant Association has been one of the leaders on the High Got Vaccinated initiative. Employers are very concerned about mandating their employees to take the COVID-19 vaccination. So today's conversation is all around what considerations should employers make when deciding on vaccination policies for their employees? So join this timely conversation as more employers are contemplating mandating their employees to take the COVID vaccination as part of their employment. As we all know, yesterday, the Food and Drug Administration granted full, full approval of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. So right now with the COVID vaccine having FDA approval, Robert, do you think this is a game changer for our employers? Absolutely, absolutely. I think it's gonna be a, a thunderbolt, a rolling ball downhill that's just gonna grab more and more employers. We already saw Disney took a positive stance. CVS Pharmacy said if you're uh, making contact uh, with, a, with a customer, uh, you have to be vaccinated. I think that's gonna be the case, but the other part of that con uh, question is, how easy is it gonna be to do? There are people that have objections and some of the objections are religious, others are medical. Uh, and if you wanna keep those people as employees, I think there should be the option to, uh, to test them on a regular basis. That was kind of uh, a mediating factor that was, I'm not gonna say overlooked, but, but not brought into question uh, yesterday. But it, it's going to be an issue, and but in answer to your question, yes, I think every day we're going to see more and more uh, major national concerns and smaller concerns uh, jumping on that bandwagon. Thank you so much. What are your thoughts, Ryan? The FDA approval of Pfizer was definitely a game changer. It's um, there was a survey conducted by Ed Case, and he just reported on Monday morning that of his constituency of those who participated, one third said that they would actually get the vaccination as long as there was FDA approval. So, you know, what the FDA approval means is now, it's not only backed by science, but it's backed by, you know, months and months of research and thousands of data points. So people can rest assured that the vaccine is safe, it's backed by science, it's something that's gonna actually be very good to get. Thank you so much. As you know, we have many restaurateurs that are now contemplating this whole initiative, you know, vaccine mandates for their employers. Gentlemen, any recommendations as also your employers, I'm an employer, you know, of, of restaurant um, employees, what should we say to our restaurant um, employers to, as they're contemplating this really tough decision? Robert, you want to take that one? What should we? Yeah, sure. What should we say to our restaurant employees? Not, not employers, employees. Employees, sorry. No, no, I might have misunderstood. No, I mean, you have to tell them, look at the facts, look at the science. You know, it's, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's proven that uh, there are going to be less cases. There are going to be cases but there's a greater chance of being um, asymptomatic, a greater chance of a lesser chance of hospitalization or death. I have three employees now. We've gone up to now without any uh, uh, employees at Roundtable or CJ's, our two restaurants at the Hilton Hawaiian Village. 
I have three employees that right now have uh, tested positive last week for COVID. Two of them are slightly symptomatic. They were unvaccinated. And one of them, uh, who is our uh, kitchen manager, has been with me about 16 years, started at age 16, uh, is totally asymptomatic, but he was vaccinated. And he's been tested twice and both times positive. So I, I think they're all, there's going to be exceptions all over the place. But in a conversation with an employee, you got to look at the facts and you got to say it's the best thing to do. You have to think of others as well as yourself. Uh, and then, too, we have to listen to their, what their objections are. And the one objection that I've heard most from some of our young girls is their concern about future pregnancies, about the reproductive system. Well, the FDA says it's not an issue. Do we believe that? We don't know. But uh, for most of those not objecting for that reason, uh, I think we have to assure them and we have to educate those that really don't know. Uh, there are a lot of people out there that just made up their mind. I've never been, been vaccinated for the flu and I don't care to be vaccinated for uh, COVID. Well, that's not enough of an answer because you're affecting other people and you may not be able to keep your job. You know, if the, if the government stops putting money out there with a stimulus plan, and I, give, I think uh, Ryan had told me September 6th is the day uh, that if it's not extended, there's the possibility of a whole bank of jobless people that don't have extra money coming in that may want to work. And based on the numbers, the total population, what, uh, vaccinated in the state, what did you say, 84%? Uh, maybe wrong on that. Most of those people are going to be vaccinated. And they're going to be able to fill spots of unvaccinated people. So the unvaccinated may be risking a job as well. So what I say to them is uh, wake up and pay attention. Nice, Robert. How about you, Ryan, to your employees? Okay, well, let me start by just um, saying, you know, in terms of the number that, that Robert gave, uh, we have for the state of Hawaii, we're the only state that uses total population as our denominator. So, you know, based on that calculation, we're actually much lower statewide. We're, you know, still in the low 60% of, of total vaccination of our total population. However, if you look at, you know, the, the eligible population, then yes, that number goes up, you know, to the low 80 percentile. So it is, um, there is a bright outlook in the sense that there's only 17% left. According to, sorry, I keep re referring to these surveys because that's really the only data that we have. You know, uh, the vaccination mandates are so recent and only as of very recently did we see something in New York City and New Orleans and San Francisco. And so a lot of it is just based on polls and market sentiment, but a recent poll, which was nationally, um, nationwide, showed that there are, um, a, you know, about 30% of Americans are unvaccinated. And so, you know, if that's, if that's true, then Hawaii at 17% versus 30%, we're actually doing quite a bit better than our mainland counterparts. So, you know, when you're thinking about how does that apply to your restaurant or to your business and, you know, what type of policy do you create? <laughs> I think Robert is right on. You know, you really have to be sensitive to your own employees. In his case, you know, the biggest objection to getting vaccinated is, you know, the possibility if you wanted to become pregnant, you know, that, that could actually be a stumbling block for you down the road and, and for the health of your unborn child. Um, again, going back to Ed Case's survey, two in three people said that their biggest concern is just the, the safety around the, the vaccination. You know, they were concerned that the vaccination is not safe and that there are going to be unintended health consequences. And this was, again, you know, with the FDA approval on Monday, this gives people a lot of confidence that the vaccine is safe. So looking at your, you know, our employees at Giovanni Pastrami, we have, um, you know, we're down with 63 pre-COVID, you know, we're down to just over 50 now, about 52 employees, and over half are vaccinated. So we're really looking at that remaining, you know, 40%, what, what do we do with them? And in talking to them, they have a number of reasons that they don't feel comfortable getting the vaccination. And some of them are very legitimate. You know, in some cases it's medical, like, you know, Robert had alluded to some, in some cases, not for us, but in other cases for other employees, it's religious. And these are two protected classes. So you have to be, you know, really err on the side of caution. If you do have, 
or decide to implement a vaccination mandate for your employees, you should at least carve out you know, something for them that they can, you know, for a written medical reason or written religious reason, um, have an opportunity to not get the vaccination. And then the employer has to reasonably accommodate that, right? The, the standard um, is much higher for disability than it would be for religion. But in that in that case, you know, when you're when you're considering a uh, company policy, it is a very slippery slope because think about the people who, for whatever the reason, you know, they just don't feel comfortable getting the vaccination, and they do believe in personal choice. And you have that flip side, right? That it's not about personal choice. This is really about building community and and protecting our kupuna, protecting our loved ones. But for them, they see it the same way. They see it like, hey, I'm, I'm protecting myself by not getting the vaccination. And in, in, in my case, you know, if it is medical or if I have a loved one who either passed away or had a traumatic experience or there was some kind of a tragedy associated with getting the vaccination, they're going to be a lot more apprehensive to do that. And when, when you mandate for them to do that, it, it really can rub them wrong. So I think being sensitive to your employees, listening to them, uh, really you know, easing it as opposed to just coming out strong and, and mandating it. What happens is it'll, um, there's a ripple effect, right? If you implement this policy and you know that the, a large number of your employees are not comfortable getting vaccinated and then you want them to have good customer service, but they're feeling like their own rights are violated how are they going to then treat customers right, going forward? So I think you know, just the, the, the care that you take in, in talking with them and implementing something that is going to work not just for them, right? because it's ultimately going to protect them. It's going to also um, protect your guests. And you know, like we talked about before, Cheryl, the, you know, it's said right now, and this came from HLTA this morning, that the vaccination is our ticket to normalcy. And in many cases, that's that's true. And so, if we can think about it from that perspective, right? You know, we all we want everybody to get vaccinated because this is going to be our collective ticket to normalcy. And we all want to get back to normal, Ryan, so badly. So thank you for that. You know, as I speak to restaurateurs every day, one of the comments that was made to me is they're very concerned about the employees turning around and suing them. Currently, there is a lawsuit in Hawaii, um, the state of Hawaii first responders um, had hired an attorney, 1,200 of them. And so, you know, what can we do, guys? I mean, what can we advise as people are also following that lawsuit? I, I think a lot of it is going to have uh, the answers are going to come from the FDA. I mean, th they started uh, by legitimizing Pfizer today, possibly Moderna next, and and uh, and acknowledging and accepting. Uh, uh, government, uh, governmental companies and private companies uh, that are, are saying we want to vaccinate everybody. Uh, I don't know if I'm answering your question directly about what we're going to do about a lawsuit, but I, I think I think we need the government to support us on that. And there, there may be case law that, that will develop. I don't know. But uh, and then if the re first responders uh, what percentage of them? I mean, what do we know? Uh, as a group, they're not opposed to the vaccination. Uh, but, you know, going back into the last question on this, if I may, together, I think the idea of a mandate, I think the governor did a wonderful thing by saying there won't be a mandate at this time. We're looking at New York, we're looking at other states, and we're seeing people suing and threatening suits. I think we have to take it gradually, and I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. I think there's got to be an alternative. I think you can say to your employees, we want you vaccinated, but if you don't want to be, we're going to test you at our expense as an employer regularly. We're going to buy time, and, we're, and in the meantime, we're going to educate you. And we're gonna, we're gonna make sure you're aware of all the facts that are coming down that we know right now are all supportive of the vaccination. And, you know, and, and then uh, we go from there. I, I don't know, uh, uh, I'm not gonna be scared off by a threatened lawsuit if I'm doing the right thing. Uh, 
you know, I feel for the first responders. We need the first responders, but uh, we need a vaccination. We, we've, we've got to stop this vaccine and it's tracks. And the only thing that we know that's working is the vaccination. And Ryan, what are your thoughts about the, the lawsuit? You know, it is, it is unfortunate. Um, I do understand where they're coming from, right? In, in this case, you know, you have, like you said, 1,200 people. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with a union as well. So you have collective bargaining that they feel may have been violated, but that whole process may have been violated. So I, I do understand where they're coming from. Um, in this case, they're also, it's not between a private employer. This is, you know, between um, the government, right? So unfortunately, that's just the reality when you have a mandate for anything, right? When you dictate to people, this is what you must do. And it, when, when it involves injecting something into your body, they may not necessarily agree. And even if there is misinformation, even if they may be misguided, in their minds, they're not, right? In their minds, the people who are um, imposing the mandate are misguided. And, and they're the ones who, who really need to, um, to rethink about what they're doing. And that's why it's a touchy subject. But at the same time, you know, like, like Robert said, you can't, if, if this is what you believe to be the right thing to do, then you, you you just cannot worry about a lawsuit if you believe in your you know that this is the best for your organization or for your people or for your community, and that's what this is coming down to, right? Is this you know this um, there's two sides and it's not right or wrong; it's good and better, right? People who who may not feel comfortable getting the shot have good reasons to do that, but now it's it's becoming clear that it's actually better for everybody overall to get the vaccination. And that's starting, you know, like Robert said, through education, it's just becoming clearer and clearer as, as more data unfolds. The FDA approval on Pfizer was, was one very large step. And so when it comes to future uh, lawsuits, you know, hopefully um, there's so many, there's, I guess there's so much uh, light being shed on the issue that employers are going to be consulting with legal counsel before they do anything. You know, there is HIPAA. Um, involved as well. So you don't want to violate HIPAA whenever you implement something that um, that is a blanket policy for, for your company or for your restaurant or for your business. And so making sure that you have strong legal counsel that's going to protect you. So in the event of a lawsuit, and you know there, that, that may be the case, and unfortunately, that's just a reality of, of how people may feel towards the situation. You know, it's not personal. They, they have a belief that they're rights are being violated. So they should be able to say and state those beliefs. And if it in includes you know, involving an attorney, that's within their right to do. And so you know you have your own legal counsel who's advising you properly, who should be, and, and then they can, you know, they can talk it out and you can come to a settlement. And hopefully that will actually spur dialogue. You know, that um, th this meeting of the minds, you know, needs to, we need to come together in this. This is a community solution. And so we need um, different, you know, different perspectives to actually create the best possible outcome. Nice, Ryan. Thank you so much. So Siobhan, do you have any questions for the gentleman? Um, well, I just wanted to touch on, I know that Ryan was talking about having strong legal counsel. What do you say to these restaurants who don't have the ability to have that strong legal counsel? Maybe they're a small mom and pop. What do you tell them? I would tell them, um, and I'm not just saying this because I'm vice chair, but I would tell them to contact Shara Matsuoka and Siobhan Garcia at the Hawaii Restaurant Association and, and seek them for guidance. Obviously, you know, the HRA will not take a legal position and, and, and would, you know, would not um, in any way take sides between employees and employers. But what they can do is they can provide resources. And the HRA has proven to be such an effective advocacy, um, not just a, a trade association, but a, a group of um, very like-minded experts, category experts who have been able to come together and mobilize through different, um, different times throughout history, but most recently during COVID, during this pandemic, which you know right now is facing the state. It's probably one of the, the greatest disasters we'll ever face because of the length of time, right? It's, we're, we're approaching how, how many months now, uh, Robert, are we at, uh, Cheryl? 18, are we at 18, 18, going on 18, 19 months. Yeah. Okay, 18, 19 months with no end in sight, right? I mean, there could be more variants. This is just, we're in the midst of Delta, and an article yesterday said that the southern states are peaking, but that's just Delta. 
you know, there are other variants that, that could, you know, come out and, and you have booster shots and there's going to be other things that, that, that make COVID an ongoing, that could make COVID an ongoing pandemic. So, you know, Siobhan, to answer your question, I would direct them, right, when, when there's that much uncertainty and, and if you don't have the resources to go out and hire, you know, a, a you know, a, a attorney who's going to really be able to look out for your interest, um, where, do you, where do you turn to? Right. And I would actually recommend that they turn to the Hawaii Restaurant Association and ask those questions and, and see you know, how we can pool our knowledge and resources together, because we're not again, we're not trying to take sides here. We're trying to create, you know, we're looking at the greater good and, and how do we create a community solution here for not just the restaurant tours, but also their employees. You're right, Ryan. If anybody has any questions, Hawaii Re Restaurant Association has been a resource throughout all of COVID. Reopening guidance, PPP, um, you know, restaurant revitalization fund, we're the resource. So go ahead and email us at info at hawaiirestaurant.org because we have great people on our board of directors, such as Ryan Tanaka and Robert Bach that can definitely support any of the restaurateurs out there that have questions. Siobhan, any other questions? Um, you know, I, I so with these mandates that we're talking about and we've seen in different states, if this were to be a mandate here in Hawaii, do you um, suspect that it would be across all sectors or will it only affect certain sectors of our community, um, like we're talking about restaurants? <laughs> I think it'll be much broader. I mean, I, I think that's obvious. I think anytime you're saying personal contact, you know, I, I play dumb to not reading about the first responders lawsuit, but bringing that into the picture, my God, who's going to have closer contact with a COVID victim than a first responder? And I find it interesting that they're objecting to a vaccination. I would have thought they're the first in line. Uh, I wonder on a national basis, this is not a national lawsuit, right? This is was based in Hawaii. The yes. First yes, based yeah. on Hawaii. I'm, I'm curious as to how contradictory that might be to uh, national opinion uh, of those first responders in New York, where the thousands of people died they were dealing with in uh, the care homes and whatnot. I find that whole thing crazy, but uh, I don't know enough about it, but just an opinion. But it, definitely, Siobhan, it, it's going to be broader. The mandate's going to hit any, any large groups that have contacts with contact with lots of people it's you know just give it time and watch we we can have we can have this discussion a week from now and we're going to have so much more to talk about <laughs> i agree that's how this whole pandemic's been rolling out ryan what are your thoughts yeah there, there actually is a precedent in new york city that um our lawmakers are reviewing because it's extremely well written and well laid out. And the, the definition is broader, right? So, you know, one thing that we would want to see included would be statewide, not just, you know, county by county, because it makes enforcement much more challenging when different counties are, you know, have, have inconsistencies in their policy. The second thing would be a broader definition of indoor recreation. Right. We're separating out, um, you know, the banks and the airlines and, you know, and the meetings and even retail, separating that out uh, from indoor recreation, things like fitness, food service, hotel hospitality, and um, uh, what would be, sorry, and entertainment, right? Entertainment. Entertainment, and entertainment, actually, so when, when you think about, you know, what, what are you, where is your, your, um, your frame of mind when you're eating and drinking or when you're out, you know, out and about, where, where's your frame of mind when you're working out or um, watching a movie or watching a sporting event, right? That, that entertainment, that, um, that re indoor recreation is, is very, uh, should be very broadly defined. And if you don't make it broadly defined, the risk, right? Because the goal of a vaccination mandate is to increase, is to incentivize increasing the vaccination rate of your area. So if we do it statewide, the purpose would be to increase the vaccination rate statewide. So if it's, if it's too specific, what happens is you begin to isolate areas that, that you may be targeting the wrong groups, right? You may be targeting areas that, um, that you're gonna actually be punishing people for good behavior and for model behavior inadvertently. And if the goal is for the employees of that industry to get vaccinated, 
if you're too specific, those employees could just move to a different industry temporarily until the mandate passes and they can go back to the same industry and avoid getting the vaccination the entire time. So what have you really accomplished if it's too specific? So, you know, I do think that the, the definition should be broad, right? Indoor recreation, on entertainment, food service, fitness, hotel hospitality, and again, statewide. Very nice. I agree totally. So, um, Shalon, do you have any other questions? No, I'm good. Thank you. Alrighty. So, um, Eric is Eric is not messaging me yet, so we can still talk. Oh, two minutes to close. <laughs> okay, thanks, Eric. So um, again, Hawaii Restaurant Association would like to thank uh, Robert Bach and Ryan Tanaka for joining Siobhan and myself today. And really, in order to our viewers, in order for this world to recover from COVID-19 pandemic, you know, we all need that herd immunity. And now that the Pfizer vaccine has received the FDA's approval and Moderna is right behind, the vaccination is safe. And Hawaii Restaurant Association is the voice of Hawaii's food service industry. And we are a resource for employers that need more information on this very important topic of how to implement a vaccine policy in your organization. So if you have any questions, reach out to us at info at hawaiirestaurant.org. Is there anything else, people? Any so we hope everyone stay safe and, you know, they mask yeah. up, they socially distance. If they are symptomatic, that they stay home and... Robert, any closing statements? Yes, uh, just as Ryan said, stay safe, hope for the best. I think we're on the right track. So what has happened nationally and locally in the last day or two days is encouraging. I'm out of town returning tomorrow, uh, but I'm staying on top of this and watching closely and um, uh, we're moving in the right direction. And, it, and Rome wasn't built in a day. But as long as we stay on course, we're going to be fine, I believe. Thank, thank you for hosting me. Oh, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for jumping on, everyone. And be safe, everyone. We'll see you in two weeks.